Reina Troy Hotline. Alicia, Michael, what's going on? We know you have takes. We have takes. I'm actually surprised that your rant line, late line, whatever, isn't completely cold. Why can't we just win a game? Can I blame Michael Castillo for this? Can I blame Bob Connolly for this? Can, can I put on a zebra shirt and just go out there? Scratch. Up against the wall. Can't explain it, what I'm feeling right now, guys. I can't believe it. Let's open up that race Woohoo! Oh, I can't believe. USC is 7 and 5 again. Oh, no! Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Renitra Radio. This is a special emergency podcast coming to you. On Friday, in the middle of the Pac-12 championship game, uh, breaking news, the Trojans are in it now. They they um, t- come to find out uh, Washington and Oregon have uh, vacated their spot and SC is in the championship game. Well, they're certainly the talk of the town on the championship game. Basically, because <laughs> the Trojans, the breaking news uh, is that USC has a new defensive coordinator. He's freaking awesome, dude. It is Danton Lynn. Uh, this is the news broken by Pete Thamel confirmed by, uh, Bruce Feldman, uh, the former UCLA. Now, I guess I can now say former UCLA defensive coordinator, Danton Lynn, who had an incredible year for the Bruins this past year, uh, as a first year defensive coordinator, uh, he's moving over from UCLA to USC. Lisa, can you think of another time in which SC is poached? A UCLA coach, like straight up, immediately. There was a talk about what Savage, the 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 baseball coach, directly from that never UCLA. Happened. Well, USC has done has gotten UCLA guys, former yeah, UCLA but like guys, not necessarily directly. But not while they were employed by UCLA, not while they yeah. were literally the only thing bringing UCLA joy. Uh, no, <laughs> I cannot remember. Yeah, I mean, this Danton Lynn was the only person bringing UCLA joy. Him and uh, Leato Yolato, um, who had an incredible season under Danton Lynn. Because uh, as the old phrase goes, uh, if you can't beat a Bruin, hire a Bruin. And um, I guess. Um, and here it goes. Uh, USC has hired uh, Danton Lynn, uh, the son of Anthony Lynn. Uh, we talked about Danton Lynn a little bit yesterday on the pod when we were uh, we were going down through all the the possible um, list of candidates, and I want to say that we it was just like uh, pulling a feather out of our ass to put him on that list. It was uh, a, it was a last minute decision, and it was more about giving a representation of the kinds of hires that USC could make the spectrum of hires that USC could make than any expectation that Dan yes. Lynn would actually be the hire. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so we're, if you're watching us live on YouTube, we've pulled up the, uh, our, uh, criteria list, and uh, he had 23 points of the 34, uh, which was not the highest score. The highest score that we found so far was Pete Kwiatkowski. Um, but um, he has the important ones, which are top 25 defense, someone who's in demand. Uh, we, we checked known talent developer and successful track record. And that was the one that I think you were a little bit questionable of. Um, but well, you know, my, my questionableness was of the track record. Is it possible to have a track record that exists if you've only been a defensive coordinator for one year? But to be fair, I think we did him dirty with the elite coaching tree. Um, cause the more I've thought about it, he's, he coached in the NFL from like the, the John Harbaugh Raven Ravens. Yeah. And I, maybe we should have given him the, uh, the nod there mm-hmm. if we were going to dock yeah. him the, the nod of a tr- successful track record, which is through no fault of his own. He's just too young to have a successful track record in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's. This is an inter- such an interesting hire. First and foremost, uh, immediate reaction thoughts. Go. What do you got? My immediate reaction was to laugh just because uh, aside from all of the other things that we can talk about with this hire, it's just flat out funny. It's the 
funniest hire that USC could have made relative to the rivalry that USC has with UCLA. Mm -hmm. Literally UCLA fans, I've spent the whole week just watching them like mourn the fact that they were going to bring back Chip Kelly. Um, The only thing that gave them joy, the only thing that gave them any hope of optimism or anything like that is that they had Danton Lynn and he had done such a great job for them this year that at least they'd get to keep that defense intact. And USC turns around and takes Danton I was honestly very split on the, what he did at UCLA this year was very good, very, very strong beginnings of his defensive coordinator tendency. There's a lot to like about Danton Lynn as a defensive coordinator, like prospect. But what I don't like about the hire, what my initial reaction of like, "Eh," is it's not, it's not an elite hire. It's not a, it's not a statement making hire unless you're talking about like the rivalry statement, which like I said, is objectively funny. It's not a national statement. We went out and got a defensive coordinator from a national contender who has done it for many years, who has proven he's not Kwiatkowski. He's not Manny Diaz. He's not even like Will Muschamp or, or one of those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not the statement hire that I wanted USC to make. But it's certainly, to to my eyes, it's certainly a better hire than a lot of other retread kind of options because this is a hire that USC is getting uh, getting into, maybe not the ground floor because UCLA did that, but uh, uh, somebody who has great potential, Mm -hmm. who checks all of the boxes that you want from somebody who has great potential and USC is getting in and giving him a chance. So I'm I'm honestly, I'm I'm very split. There's a lot to be excited about. There's also high risk. Yeah, I think there is there is high risk here. I think that it it sort of reminds me not completely, but of the Andy Enfield hire in the sense that you're going after someone who is a sudden sudden burst on the scene guy um with the hope that this is the trajectory that keeps going and we can, we can talk until we're blue in the face about whether or not Andy Enfield has been uh, you know, a, a big success story. I think he, he hasn't <laughs> failed at USC for sure. But, um, you know, I, I think that the, the best, the best read of this hire for SC is twofold. Number one, you SC needs someone who can go in, turn around the defense immediately and turn around a defense that has questionable pieces of, uh, has, Talent in in spots, certainly, but also questionable depth of talent um, and is trying to repair a defensive system that is was completely awful with with how everything uh, was this year. USC defense was horrible. So you need someone who can come in and repair that quickly. You can make the argument there is nobody better prepared to do that than Danton Lynn because he literally did that thing at UCLA this year. UCLA last year's defense was bad. They were just as bad as SC's defense was last year, uh, and they bounced back this year, the 12th in F, in F+, plus, 12th in available yards, 9th in points per drive, 11th in, in uh, drive yards per, per play. Uh, the number one rush defense in the country, they just held USC to, what was it, three yards of rushing? Like this, he literally did what you want USC's new defensive coordinator to do, which is to immediately come in and turn around a bad defense. I think that is the biggest, you know, you're going out to to get the exact thing that you want, the exact solution. The other bright side is he's someone that I think is, is young and has aspirations to, to continue to grow. And I think that only means that this guy is as motivated as ever as you could ever get in this sense. Um, But like you said, there is risk. There's risk of any hire. And this is why you should always judge hires twice. You judge it in the moment and you judge it as it goes forward. This is, I I think this could go, uh, could end up being a raging success where he comes to SC and he is fantastic. And I don't know, maybe that means that he doesn't last long because he's great. Um, or maybe that means that, you know, he ends up, who knows, uh, maybe 
everything goes successful and Lincoln Riley goes to the NFL and Denton Lynn's your next head coach. I don't know. You know, like anything could happen. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, but like you said, I think there is inherent risk because he's only been a defensive coordinator for one season. Um, but I think that we shouldn't necessarily talk about him as this guy who is, you know, doesn't have uh, a, a track record of success. He's been coaching since 2014. It's a, it's a decade ago now. Uh, in 30 days, that's going to be a decade ago. Um, he's been a secondary coach um, under the Texans and under the Ravens. Um, he In the NFL, he's had a successful track record. We know that he has connections to his dad, who's the former coach of the Chargers, and not that nepotism you know, matters too much, even though this is USC, of course, but I, I think that we need to, you know, realize that like he, yeah, he hasn't been an offensive coordinator long, but he has been in the game. Um, yeah. and, and I think that, and you know, that, that speaks for itself that he was able to go up the ranks to get that defensive coordinator job. Rising up the ranks in the NFL, the way, the way that he did was, a, mm-hmm. a I think a good sign at, 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 teams that value defense um those are all those are all a very good sign uh, yeah. what he did in year one flipping around a ucla defense the way he did very very good sign and this is the thing that i i think you need to remember here i wanted usc to make the big home run hire we, we have a question from uh from cameron in the chat is, is this a home run hire i'm still undecided about it because he's only been a dc for one season i don't think this is a home run hire um just being honest, because a home run hire is is stealing Texas's defensive coordinator. A home run hire is yeah. stealing Penn State's defensive coordinator. Th- those are what I would call the home run hires. This is a hire. This is a a a, a double with a it's guy. A double to the gap. Yeah. This is a, a double with a guy that can steal that can steal bases. This is a this is a a a double with um with uh, uh Ronald Acuña or whatever. I don't know. But, but you know, it, it's it's it, it's a, a it's tough, higher though. but it's it's difficult because you like I said, I think there's a very good reason to be split on this. I think anybody who's saying it's a home run hire is being a little bit prisoner of the moment. Um we literally can't know that right now. Like you say all the time, you can't judge it. You judge a hire in the moment, but ultimately you judge the coach by what they do. And if he yeah. ends up being a great defensive coordinator that doesn't that doesn't change the fact that this still isn't a home run hire. This is a hire that well, um, that can go wrong for a lot of reasons. It can go right for a lot of reasons. It's sort of in that mix. Let me let me rephrase that differently. I think this is the 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 essence of why you should judge hires in two different phases. Would you say that he was a home run hire for UCLA? No, he wasn't. In the moment or how, as he panned out? Because as he panned out, I think yes. In the like, moment when UCLA it, it, hired Danton Lynn, it wasn't a home run hire. It was a it was a good okay. hire prospective hire. But, but as it you wasn't s- a home run hire. I don't think anyone at UCLA would have expected him to do what he did this year at UCLA. So But as it stands right now, did would did, was he not a roaring success at UCLA he was yeah absolutely no so but, so but, like but but like let, let me be let me be clear here. he was a roaring success all of the numbers bear that out um 12th and f plus defense 12th in available yards 9th in points per drive 11th in drive yards per play yeah. second in long scrimmage plays in the pack 12 fourth in the, all of those were national now we're in pack 12 stats fourth in red zone conversions third in in third down conversions first in sack first in total defense second in scoring defense in the pack 12 these are all very very good numbers Mm -hmm. but the numbers are also there are also a lot of uncertainties here ucla didn't play oregon and washington their numbers are skewed um the the draw the opponent adjusted advanced statistics still like ucla's defense which is good um but you also you also can't apply UCLA's defense against teams like Oregon and Washington, which might have still affected all of those kinds of those kinds of numbers. What they did against UC what against USC is arguably the biggest reason to hire Danton Lynn. But we also know that USC's offense was a very weak offensive line against a defense that he inherited with a player like Latu Latu. Does USC have a player on the roster right now who can replicate 
the disruptive nature of Leatu Latu at USC and help stabilize a USC defense because it sure helps when you have an NFL level uh, pass rusher on your defense mm-hmm. uh, to uh, to to get you started there. Yeah, um, I'm not saying that USC doesn't. I'm not saying that he couldn't get a hell of a lot more out of Jamil Muhammad or any of the uh, or any of the other defensive players that USC has. I'm not saying that he couldn't do amazing things with Bear Alexander. Uh, he absolutely can. But there are you you have to look at the UCLA success through the lens of one season doesn't tell you for sure that somebody is capable of doing all the things that it takes to be a long-term defensive coordinator. Yeah. When I say these things, I'm not meaning them to be critical of the hire. I think it's a good hire, and this is part of the reason why. I wanted UC- USC to make the home run higher, but let's be realistic. If every conversation that I had with people about Pete Kwiatkowski, about Manny Diaz, about Will Muschamp, about everybody, all, all the big names that we were talking about, every single one of them, they came back to why would they leave to go to USC? And every time the rationalization in my head had to be, do they want to live in Los Angeles? That's not a very good reason to change your job, to uproot your life sure. and your family and some more money to be to be sure. But to take over a defense that was statistically the worst defense in the history of USC football, that was a laughing stock, that was uh, clearly in need of a massive overhaul uh, to 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 go leave a stable position where you've been successful. Because let's face it, USC only wanted to look at play, at coaches who had been successful at the places they were at. Why leave a stable job to come to USC where? You don't know if Lincoln Riley is going to leave for the NFL in the next year. You don't mm-hmm. know if 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 uh, if it's going to take significantly more time to rebuild the USC defense in your image, and are you going to be given that time? You don't know if you're going to wreck your career by going to USC. There's so many reasons why not to come to USC. So in that context, if we accept that maybe USC faced hurdles to hiring the home run guys and they were reasonable hurdles given the circumstances around USC – USC has to then make a hire that's going to have more holes in it, going to have to make a hire of somebody who still has stuff to prove, who, who, who has to see USC as, a, as an upward step instead of a lateral step. Um, and that's what Denton Lynn feels like to me. It's, it's, mm-hmm. He is in a position where he had a great, great showing at UCLA this year. He has to prove that he can sustain that success to continue to give himself opportunities uh, in in the profession i don't mind like the hire is good in that context the hire is in fact great in that context of the of the defensive coordinators usc could have targeted um in the class that that the anthony lynn that uh that danton lynn is in he's a A plus in that class so Mm -hmm. it's all it's all sort of in in the muddle that way of of this is the position that USC put themselves in. Right. They put themselves in a position of weakness to make this hire and probably took themselves out of the, out of the running for some of the sure thing hires and you work with what you can get. And Dan and Danton Lynn is what you can get is pretty damn good. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I think that if, if you're going to end up with, if, yeah, if you don't get Kwiatkowski or, Diaz or Leonard or any of those guys who would be the top two or three names that say Nick Saban would be calling right now. Um, if you're not going to get those guys then, and you are going to have to have a hire that, that bears out more risk than say normally even a, a home run hire has, then I think this is the kind of risk that I think is worth taking on um, in the sense of com- compare this to, w- would you rather have the risky hire be the young guy who hasn't proven it yet, but has shown in the last 365 days, how good he can be? Or would you rather have that risk be some sort of a reclamation project of some sort? And I'm talking about like Todd Orlando, right? Like, Todd Orlando comes to SC a few years ago uh, after the the whole thing 
implodes at Texas. And he was someone who had a good track record, but clearly things had gone poorly for him at Texas at the end. And so the hope was that that was an aberration that he was going to get. He, while he had the track record, the hope was that he was going to get back to that, to that spot. Right. He didn't at SC. He, 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 he did not. He had a decent first year, but the second year was terrible. Right. And I think that the hope is that like, Dan Lynn doesn't have those negative years on his on his resume his because best years are ahead of him. He hasn't gotten there yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there's a there's a James in the chat says stop looking at the numbers. His defense did great against bad uh, bad offensive teams. The only team that really pushed around his defense was the juggernaut known as the Oregon State Beavers. Yeah, like but but you that that they only they only can play who they have in front of them. Like yeah. Um, you know, looking at it, um, it, it's, it's very difficult because you look at who were the best rushing offenses in the PAC 12 this year. It was UCLA number one, Oregon, number two, Utah, number three. Well, UCLA only played one of those three. It was Utah. Well, what did Utah do, uh, against SC on the grounds? Uh, 48 carries for 102 yards, averaging 2.13 yards per carry. Like, I, you know, yes, they didn't play Oregon. And no, I don't think Utah is a juggernaut offensively. Certainly not. But like ho- holding Utah to what they did on the ground, I think has some merit when you compare that to Utah running for 317 yards against Cal or 352 yards against ASU, a defense that we thought was good, ASU's defense, mm-hmm. or 247 against SC. So, yeah, they, UCLA, can, the, the numbers are faulty in the sense that they didn't play the exact schedule that SC did. But I, I think that you are you might be lying to yourself if you think that just playing Oregon and Washington would balance out things to the point that they would tank the numbers that much. I don't think that they would. Um, well, yes, we don't I, I, know. We don't know. And t- to assume that they would is just as bad as assuming that they, that UCLA would have held those teams to 10 points. Like it's, yeah, it's and faulty. I don't think they would have. Yeah. Right? It's, it's faulty on both ends. That right. assumption, you just have to accept that we don't know because they did those matchups didn't happen. Yeah. Um, but one of the other things that you also have to take into account here, I think two things that I would say you need to take into account. Number one, UCLA's defense was working opposite an offense that was putting them in very, very bad positions a lot of the time. So yes. uh, these numbers, like even the Oregon State game is, I, I'm not going to hold that against them necessarily. <laughs> like well, there were, there was a pick six in that game, yeah, right? The, there was, Same there, thing with the, the, the Utah game. Yeah. There are extenuating circumstances there in terms of like whether or not they got, they got lit up by anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and number two, that I think I think it's perfectly fine as a USC fan to be realistic about what USC needs from their defense. Do I want USC to have a top 10 defense? Absolutely. I want USC to have a top 10 defense, but we're back to the same conversation that we talked about many times before. Like right now in the current, what USC needs is just to have a defense that has a pulse. USC needs a defense that is not giving up a bajillion like record number of yards, record number of points, record number of everything to every single team they face, no matter how good or bad their offense is. Mm -hmm. So if Danton Lynn turns out to be a mid defensive coordinator, you've still created a stepping stone that sets yourself up to be better in the future. Like I think part of the issue here is that USC has to understand USC, the fan base, USC, the team, USC, the, the administration, everything needs to understand that, that you don't get to skip the line. You mm-hmm. have to build your program back into a, t- a team that can, that can contend. And if Danton Lynn is a, you know, a, a, a top 40 defense, you at least can then get to a point where you stabilize your defense, you start bringing in talent. And then when you need to make the next hire, then you can go out and make the superstar big hire that takes you into the top 10 elite tier. But you have to earn the right to like convince those guys. that it's not a huge mistake to come to USC and coach at USC. So it's about, it's about understanding the context of where USC is as a a program 
And that's what this hire is made in context of. The the other thing to go back to the numbers. Um, yeah, he didn't, Danton Lynn didn't face the elite, truly elite, elite, elite offenses. But I think that, you know, had SC hired, say, Jim Leonard or Manny Diaz or whatever um, from the, like someone with Big Ten experience, Tony White, we'd be sitting here talking about numbers against Iowa and Illinois and Purdue and Northwestern and Minnesota. Is that not the same thing too? Like, you know what I mean? Like, the, the numbers are are what they are, and this is why I like using numbers that are um, adjusted, like SP Plus, as just a simple way of looking at things. Um, and UCLA last year was 17th, or this past year was 17th in, in SP Plus. So they're, they're, they're a good defense. Uh, SC has got well, to figure out a way to, to make it work with Danton Lynn, and I think that um, I, we're, we – want to save some of the deeper discussion for next week. Certainly. Um, and since this is sort of a little reaction, a, a, a react, little emergency reaction pod, but I did want to talk about the structure of the defense. Um, UCLA's defense as it stands on their depth chart is a two, five, four, um, two down linemen, two outside linebackers, a will, a Mike, a Sam, two corners, two safeties. I think it's important to note though, that that two, five, four presents itself as a four, three, where the two outside linebackers are essentially stand up edge rushers that are on the line of scrimmage. And for the Bruins, that was Latu and Murphy, one of the Murphy twins. So, um, and Latu and Murphy, I, I I have our notes from the going into the UCLA SC UCLA game. They had combined for like twenty five tackles for loss as those stand up outside edge edge rushing outside linebackers who are basically stand up defensive ends, right? Uh, so what do you? How do you think that the transition to a defense that is essentially a stand up four three two five four combo multiple thing sort of works off the top of your head immediately. It certainly, it feels like it'll, I mean, obviously we need to do a little bit more research here, but it feels like it fits the personnel that USC has. Um, USC, it's certainly not a change to the like three, three, five that was going to require significant uh, personnel upheaval um mm-hmm. from from a usc perspective even uh, then i don't think the 335 is that well no drastically because, different. again because everyone's multiple right everyone's multiple that's the the big thing to understand but um yeah usc has a bunch of dudes who are feel like they would fit that mold i mean anthony lucas feels like he fits that mold braylon shelby feels like he fits that mold um we assume that romello height and jamil muhammad are, are coming back um uh, those guys, again, I, I feel like the, the, the edges, there's, there's no reason though that those don't fit in, uh, USC obviously needs additional help on the defensive line. And it was notable, notable a couple hours before, um, before the hire was, uh, the, the news broke, there were, um, offers that went out to a, uh, to a defensive lineman uh, from from Penn, a six foot four, three hundred pound defensive lineman who's the number one defensive line prospect in the class, according to Chris Torino, uh, that 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 transfer portal offer went out right before this news broke. So they're clearly going out there to add the defensive lineman that they need. But no matter what system USC was going to use, they're going to have they were going to need to to add defensive linemen. Um, mm-hmm. Personnel wise, though, it feels like this. It doesn't feel like USC needs a stylistic overhaul of personnel. They just need to continue to get better personnel. Yeah. Ivy league transfers. Uh, you know, hey. that, that's, that's one way to do it for sure. Hey, if they're 300 pounds, I'll take it. Yeah. The, the, um, it, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Uh, Randy says, would you say Lynn will have more to work with, uh, roster wise at SC? I, I mean, that's the question that, that that's going to be the question because, he yeah he he did have a good situation of Latu and Murphy were guys in the transfer portal that UCLA got but they were guys that UCLA got with term 
Uh, Latu had been at UCLA. This was his third season, I believe. Mur- the Murphy twins had been there uh, since 2022. Um, but the flip side is Latu and Murphy were productive last year um, with Clancy Pendergast as the caretaker defensive coordinator, but the defense was awful last year, even with them being productive. So who are those productive guys for SC to, to step in? Like you said, it, it could be someone like Shelby. Um, if Corey Foreman sticks around, it's Corey Foreman, someone he can turn get, into something, turn yeah. into some, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. We're, yeah, we're, we're going to have to see Romello height. I think has shown flashes of, of, of brilliance at times, but not enough consistency, but that was the problem with all of USC's players, Kalen Bullock included, right? Well, and that's, you know, Danton Lynn is a secondary coach by trade. Uh, yeah. If Kalen Bullock decides he wants to come back, that's a pretty good reason to come back, to be coached by somebody who did it in the NFL. I uh, can get you ready for the NFL. I, I think there's um, mm-hmm. that this was my frustration about USC's defense this year. Yeah. You cannot look at this collection of players and tell me they were that bad. The, the the individuals collectively were worse than the individuals as as individuals the 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 parts were greater than the whole yeah um in in my opinion and you know maybe there are some guys who you got to clear out but this this defense is not is not completely and utterly lacking of individual talent that individual talent was completely wasted on an on a on a per man basis so yeah uh Either way, you hope that SC can go into next year and, you know, we can have lines for overs and unders that ends up putting the Trojans in spots to get sacks and stuff like that. Because, Mm -hmm. you know, you also don't have to wait until next year because have you heard of Sleeper Daily Fantasy? Sleeper hosts daily fantasy prop games that you can compete for a chance to win big cash prizes. The game is simple for each context. You are given a pool of props for upcoming games across different sports. And whether you pick each prop will be over or under given the given total. You can choose up to eight different props for a chance to win big. If you want to join in on the action, we got you covered. Sign up with their promo code FANSIDED2 today and receive a, a deposit match of up to 100 bucks using the code FANSIDED2 when signing up not only gives you the great reward, but helps support this very podcast. The offer, of course, available to only New customers who are 18 plus and physically present in valid states, including sunny California. Uh, please remember to always game responsibly and check the episode description for the full terms of the offer. If you're watching on YouTube, get your phone, hit the little sleeper thing, uh, QR code that's on the screen, uh, and go play sleeper. Um, it's too late to do an over under prop for the PAC 12 championship game, but Alicia, it's almost halftime, and Washington is absolutely jiggle bagging Oregon right now, twenty to three. This is I the, the line that had Washington as a ten point dog in this game. I looked at it and I said, I understand why, but also the disrespect to Washington was massive, and they are acting like it was. I I genuinely think Oregon and Washington are the two best football teams in the country. Genuinely think that. Well, maybe Georgia. Sure. Yeah, I give Georgia. But I expected this game to be a repeat of the first one, which was a slugfest. Uh, it is still a bit early. Uh, things can things can change in a hurry. So, uh, hopefully, for the uh, spectators' sake, it, it it gets a little little interesting. But Washington, you know, absolutely lily warping the ducks there. Um bodes well for their chance to, you know, go and win a title for the first time since 91. So who knows? We'll see. see. We will see. Uh, All right. Uh, We will be back uh, next week, uh, Monday, Monday night, as always, to talk more about Danton Lynn. Uh, Danton, that's what it is. It's Danton. It's like the, it's like the yogurt, but with a T in there. It's not DeAnton. It's not DeAnthony. Danton. Well, it turns out his given name is just Anthony Lynn Jr. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. da- they had to differentiate him some way, some yeah. way. Danton. Danton. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll be back next time. Uh, until then, we will see you. Yeah. See you guys.